Hello, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. Well, as I look here, I don't have my headset, but I continue with the presentation. Now, this afternoon, we are going to look at, I did say morning, but I think that this is the published in the afternoon. So good afternoon, you know, good evening, whenever it gets to you. Now, I am going to talk briefly about the whole situation of the Jamaican passport and the fact that we have a number of Jamaican citizens who are crossing the Panama um, through Panama and route to the United States, right? In their quest to get out of Jamaica and to get to the United States. But this sort of migration, immigration, call it whatever you will, is illegal. Right, it's an illegal immigration, it's legal immigration, and many of our citizens are fleeing Jamaica because of the insecurity, the economic insecurity, and also the physical insecurity, national insecurity that exists on the island. We understand that our economy is not in the best shape, you know, con contrary to what the politicians are telling us, that we are on this foundation, on this platform for growth. Right, and the economy is about to be taken off. That is not true. Right, the economic indicators defy all the deceptions and the lies that we are being fed with. And it's time for Jamaicans to wake up. You know, I hear people talking about trickle down economy or this trickle down philosophy. Right, economic theory that has been in vogue for how many years, right? Jamaica has been hearing that since independence, right? That the economic prosperity will eventually be trickled down. In the 70s, under the Michael Manley democratic socialism, we heard about better must come, right? That the economy will eventually improve the lives of our citizens and nothing happened, right? Mr. Seattle under the Mr. Seattle economic miracle, that miracle did not come, did not really arrive for the majority of Jamaicans. And we had Dr. Omar Davis, the world-class finance minister of the 1990s, right, along with Mr. P.J. Patterson. And we, after we had been fin-sacked, all of this economic prosperity did not happen, right? Fast forward to the 21st century, right? We had the PNP, they actually was running with it, right? Running with it because they were actually giving the wealth to the PSA, PSOJ, um, you know, financial elites, along with the their government you know enablers and the betters right and then we had of course mr bruce golding who made some attempts give him his credit he made some attempts to sort of correct some of the wrongs in our economy but you know no sooner had he started than we had the dudo saga and then the imf debacle and this sort of conflict between austerity and progressive economic policies, right? Because we understand that the IMF is not for progressive economic policies. They're there to really suffocate you economically and to ensure that you do not progress economically as you ought to, right? But somehow Jamaicans still believe in the IMF and we think that these white guys going down there and sending their Indian people and other black people who represent them, that they are for the interest. They are actually, you know, working in the interest of Jamaicans, but they are not working in the interest of Jamaicans. It's time for Jamaicans to read. We have this aversion on all things we know. We don't like to speak English and we also don't like to read, right? We have this aversion to reading. We don't want to read. We just love to chat, right? And that's why you have Jamaica can be branded right, as the country of talk show hosts, right? If you want to make money, just go and talk right, and talk a lot of nonsense, and you will get money. People will call in, and they'll talk all the rubbish, right, and the issues, the important substantive issues are not being dealt with, right? That is what we need to talk about. But let us open up the, um, there is a website here, the Council on Foreign Relations, that is CFR.org, and the the uh, what you call it now the title of the article is is is, is titled here crossing the Darien gap migrants risk death on the journey to the U.S. Hundreds of thousands of migrants from Haiti 
Venezuela and elsewhere, risk their lives each year to cross the Darien Gap between Colombia and Panama. And I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see that I am not making up the story, right? And it's coming from the Council on Foreign Relations, right? So I'm sure that you will believe what they're saying to you, right? Because you're credulous. I understand how you think. Now, so we have here, and this article was written on February 1st, 2024. So this is quite a recent piece, right? And the author's name are Diana Roy, and we also have Sabine Bohr Gartner, right? Not sure how to pronounce her name or if it's a male or female. Anyway, all right, let's get into the crux of the matter. So we have the Darren Gap is an imposing obstacle on one of the world's most dangerous migration routes, all right? The remote roadless crossing on the border between Colombia and Panama consists of more than 60 miles of dense rainforest, steep mountains, and vast swamps. So this is really, really a treacherous sort of path, a treacherous route. It is the only overland path connecting Central and South America over the past few years. It has become a leading transit point for migrants in search of work and safety in the United States as authorities have cracked down on other routes by air and sea, right? And we can see here, this is the route, the Darien route that is in Panama, right? And Jamaicans have free access to Panama. Visas are not imposed yet, right? Because, but the more we find ourselves in the situation where we are actually having our people, masses of our people going there illegally, then they will eventually impose visas up on Jamaicans. We will have visa you know, um, restrictions. It's very important that we understand that. However, migrants face many challenges on this land journey northward, including treacherous terrain, exposure to disease and violence at the hands of criminal groups. As the number of migrants grows, so too does the impact on indigenous communities whose lands they often traverse. Government officials and international aid organizations have sought to manage the crisis by setting up temporary housing and providing basic services to those arriving in Panama, where resources are rapidly being depleted. UN officials warn of a deepening humanitarian emergency after more than half a million migrants made the trek in 2023. Half a million. That's a lot of people right, who are heading to the United States as we speak, right? And it's a treacherous path. And my understanding is that you have wild animals, including crocodiles, in some of the areas that they have to traverse, and also venomous snakes. In addition to that, you have robberies, armed attack, right? And you also have rape and kidnappings, right? So our people are exposing themselves to danger, right, to untold danger. The fact of the matter is that they're risking their lives because they think what they have to deal with in Jamaica is not worth really staying there. And so they prefer to risk their lives on their way to what they think is the land of milk and honey in the United States, right? That is what our people have come to. In, in, you know, it, the fact is, the sad fact is that our politicians have lied to us for so many years. And this, we're now seeing the evidence of what really is happening in Jamaica. When you see that a lot of our populace, a lot of our citizens are leaving and taking such a dangerous path, you know that our economy is not doing well, right? And they know that their lives are not secure in Jamaica. And that is why they are taking that dangerous path, that dangerous route. But many of you, you are still are listening, you know, are listening to the Cliff Hughes and all of the mainstream media people there and the political pundits who tell you nonsense in Jamaica and the economic, you know, elites and the the people from the University of the West Indies who talk about the economy and what they say really doesn't hold, you know, um, and they understand that they are actually supporting the elites, the, the agenda of the Jamaican elites. They understand that and they know that what they're telling you is not truthful, right? But I'm here to tell you the truth that our economy is not doing well. Our economy is not doing 
well, all right? And I am not sure how long we'll be able to hold the lie, right? Because before things start crumbling right before our faces, right? Because things are going to crumble. You cannot just lie for so many years and think that things are just going to, you know, um, miraculously change, right? And that the lies are going to happen the way how you want them to happen. It's not going to happen that way, right? It's not going to happen that way. We're seeing also, you know, in Kenya at the moment that people are protesting because you have the IMF there also and their taxes are being increased. Taxes on bread, taxing on, taxes on basic items and Kenyans are protesting, right? They're protesting against the government overreach. And Jamaicans are sitting there and we're talking nonsense about what is happening, that we are living in this great economy when we know of a fact that we are not living in a great economy, that the economy has been faltering for many years, for many years. And it's a miracle that God has kept up for so long, right? That God has kept up for so long despite the theft and the lies and the deceits told and often practiced by our deceptive politicians. Now, this is what the, the um, Council on Foreign Affairs, right? The Council on, on, on Foreign Relations, this, these are the factors that they say contribute to this migration, right? Economic insecurity, political up upheaval, violence, and climate change are driving record numbers of migrants from their own countries, according to UN experts. Now, there was an article written in the St. Vincent Times, and here it says, Jamaica government warns nationals about involvement in illegal migration. It says here, and this was dated on April 13th, 2023, the Jamaican government urged nationals on Wednesday against participating in illegal migration, citing a relatively small number of Jamaicans pursuing illegal migration via Mexico, Panama, and Belize. I am not sure if it is a minute number of Jamaicans who are leaving, because in another source that I had read, I understand that the, the that Panama had rejected how many Jamaicans? The 2,000 um more than 2,000 Jamaicans since 2018, they have, you know, because we have free passage to get to Panama, but the Panamanian authorities have rejected over 2,000 and more Jamaicans, right, into their country. They have deported these people, right? They do not want them in their country. It means, therefore, that you have quite a bit of Jamaicans moving and trying to follow that illegal immigration route. Now listen to what Kamina Johnson-Smith, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, has to say. He stated at, at the weekly post-cabinet news conference that Jamaicans should not seek to enter a foreign nation illegally, right? So she can talk all she wants to say. What she needs to tell her prime minister under whom she's working is that we need to fix our economy and we need to create a stable environment, a peaceful and safe environment in which our citizens can live in harmony, right, with their fellow citizens, right? And that is what she needs to be telling Prime Minister Andrew Cones. But this is what she has to say. And what she says has some validity, right? Because I have been saying this for so many years. She says, I'm confident that the majority of our travelers to these locations are lawful and traveling for legitimate purposes, John Smith told reporters, adding that we are very concerned that Jamaicans are making decisions to travel in extremely risky circumstances and in some cases, taking children with them, exposing them to dangerous situations such as kidnapping, trafficking, trafficking and even death, right? So we have kidnappings, trafficking and even death. They are subjecting their children. The parents are also being subjected to these sort of, you know, unfortunate instances and circumstances. You know, this is what she continues to say. That is Johnson Smith. I know some of you read this morning in a particular publication that the governments of Panama and the United States are taking steps to tighten patrols and movement through a specific route they have identified as a route for illegal migrants. 
we are attempting to be proactive and bring to the attention of Jamaicans that this is not a good decision to make. It is extremely risky for you personally, and it also affects the reputation of our passport. Let me repeat that. It also affects the reputation of our passport, which we have worked hard to strengthen, she said. But, Kamina Johnson-Smith, let me say something to you. You might have worked hard to secure the reputation, preserve the reputation of the Jamaican passport, but if the economy, if the social environment is messy, right, and we do not put it in, or input these, the factors, and we do not develop a healthy society, society that is law-abiding, in which citizens can live harmoniously, and our economy is doing well, then work all you want to work. That reputation is definitely going to be dissolved, right? All of the work that you have put in with regard to preserving the reputation of the Jamaican passport is going to be null and void. And I say that to say that we have to stop being hypocrites here. And we've got to face the reality. And Jamaicans have long been fooling themselves that the country is this wonderful, you know, Jamaica no problem not, right? It is not, right? It is hell on earth for many Jamaicans. I repeat that. The Jamaican experience in Jamaica is hell on earth for the majority of its citizens. And we've got to wake up and stop telling me that you're going there and you're having a wonderful time. Yeah, people go to Haiti and they have wonderful time there too because they have their money to spend. Or you can go anywhere in the world, right? And have a wonderful time because you have your money to spend. But the citizens who are there, majority, if the truth be told, are going through hell, right? Time for us to wake up and stop lying to ourselves, the lies that we tell ourselves got to get, you know, attuned to reality, right? We've got to do it. Um, here we have on Nationwide, this is Cliff Hughes sort of website. Let me share this with you. And we see here a picture of your esteemed Minister of Foreign Affairs, of Foreign Affairs. that is Camino Johnson-Smith. So let me share my screen and let's delve into what Nationwide is here reporting. So we have Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Kamala Johnson-Smith is alert alerting Jamaicans that the U.S. and Panama have announced a 60-day campaign aimed at halting illegal migration through the treacherous Darien Gap. And that is in Panama, right? So this is what they are reporting here, right? So we have last week, Minister John Smith told Nationwide News that anecdotal evidence suggests that the Panama, Mexico, and Belize are popular gateway destinations for Jamaicans and other nationals seeking a backdoor into the United States. All right, so what are these areas? Panama, Mexico, and Belize. And we have also been denied a number of visas for Jamaicans going to Mexico. She says the government was aware of Jamaicans purchasing illegal, legal tickets rather. So they are purchasing legal tickets because they can go there legally without any visas intending to travel illegitimately through Central America. So they have purchased legal tickets, right, in their quest to enter the United States illegally because Jamaicans do not have to have visas to go to Panama and I understand Mexico in recent times. She says the government was aware of Jamaicans purchasing. So we, I think we read that before. She says Panama has been heightening its vigilance at immigration checkpoints, right? So according... So what he's saying, according to the latest validated statistics, I think this might be reported by Nationwide. This is not what she, she's saying. Um, well, let me read it. According to the latest validated statistics from the Passport Immigration Citizenship Agency that speak of between 2018, I was um, intimating this before, and March this year, that would have been 2023, I believe, when this article was published. Yes, right? So between that time, Right? Let me, where did I, yeah, did I miss it? Oh, right. So let me reread it. According to the latest validated statistics from the, pa the Passport Immigration Statistics Agency, 
peak up between 2018 and March this year, over 2,000 Jamaicans were refused entry to Panama. Right? Over 2,000 Jamaican, Jamaicans were refused entry to Panama. Over the same period, 81 persons were deported. For Mexico, 143 Jamaicans were refused entry. Right? And this is what Minister Johnson Smith um, says. And she's saying that this is going to affect the reputation of the Jamaica's passport is at risk, right? The reputation of Jamaica's passport is at risk, right? This is what we need to understand. And in addition to that, we're bringing our lawlessness there and our vulgarity, right? Our vulgarity and the lawlessness that we are accustomed to in Jamaica. And people are not going to tolerate it, right? Foreigners are not going to tolerate it. Got to get our acts together. So right now, the Jamaican passport could be at risk while we're seeking to become a republic and we are going to become this independent nation, right? And people are going to respect us on the world stage because we are the Republic of Jamaica, right? This is the sort of naivete that is pervasive on the island of Jamaica. We're not living in reality, right? We are not living in reality, right? We have created this sort of paradise in our minds, right, that does not exist. And we think that just merely removing the king as head of state and severing ties with Great Britain, that we are on our way to prosperity and that we are on our way to, you know, crafting a respectable image on the world stage. That is not so. And that is never going to happen if we do not take stock to understand that we are on the wrong road and that we are on the road of destruction, right? We are on the road of a lack of progress. Nothing that we're doing there right now is progressive in any sense of the word, right? We are not on a progressive path, right? We're just on the path that Haiti is currently on the moment. They are further on the journey, right? For years, they also were on the wrong road and they are further along on the journey of destruction. And we are heading on that same, what do you call that? Is it exit or that same route? Right, that's the route that we have taken. We we took that exit on the highway, and we're heading to destruction. And people have been saying that, including myself, have been saying that we're on the path. We have to make the detour. But I think that we have long passed the detour, and we're not able to turn back at this current moment. So we just have to head to that path of destruction. That is sad. It is unfortunate because we are stubborn, we're obstinate, and we are arrogant. We don't like to hear and to listen to prudent advice and to prudent warnings. And right now, even our very passports are at risk. Not only the lives, the physical lives of Jamaican are at risk, but even our very passport. The people in Jamaica, our leaders have destroyed the Jamaican reputation and the Jamaican identity on the world stage, right? And they're not representing you. I have been saying to you for a long time that they are not representing you on the world stage. They are representing the financial elites. And you've got to wake up. You've got to begin to smell the coffee. You've got to understand that we are on a path of destruction. The question is, will as Kamina Johnson Smith is suggesting, will our passport be affected? Will the reputation of our passport be impacted? That is a question that I think we have the answer for, that yes, if it continues like that, and I think it will continue because Jamaicans are fleeing because they understand that Jamaica is not in a position to take care of them, of them and their children. 
right? They understand that. And that is why they are, you know, using the opportunity, seizing the opportunity, though it is illegal. And I, it's not supported by me because no form of illegal immigration is supported by me. So let me just be clear on that. I'm just suggesting here because we have not developed the environment and we have not developed our economy or people find themselves in that sort of plight where they are running, they are running away from the land of their birth. I hope that you guys are understanding that we are, this is nothing that is a lightweight matter. This is a serious matter. And it's now time for us to move away from looking at personalities with regard to our political campaigns and elections. Mark Bolding and Andrew Holness and you're vouching for one of them. They're not going to change things. These guys are not committed to changing the status quo in Jamaica. They're there to preserve the status quo, to keep you in poverty and to keep you in your places, right? To keep you as slaves in your places. And it's time for you to wake up and to understand that. But many of you talk as I may. You don't care and you don't want to understand it. Oh, no, that's not true because, you know, the economic environment is great. These people are lazy or they are unskilled. Right? They are lazy or they are unskilled. And while eight percent of our graduates are leaving every year. Right? And if our people were so unskilled and didn't have the intellectual or the manual capacity to do whatever they are doing, whatever profession that they might be engaged in. Every year we have foreigners going to Jamaica and taking the best, the creme de la creme of our people and leaving Jamaica with the riffraff, with the undesirables to build. And we can't build a country with undesirables. And when I say undesirables, I'm not looking down on anyone, but I'm saying that if we don't have the skills, then yeah. And we can't build because we don't have the skills and the intellectual acuity because many of the people have left, all these people who could have built. We have not encouraged them to remain there right, then that's what you're going to be left with, right? That is what you are going to be left with. And every day when you look at the news in Jamaica, that is what you're seeing, right? You're seeing the majority of our people who are there hopeless, right? Basic intelligence is not there, right? How are we going to build an economy like that? How do we expect to build a civilization and a culture, a respectable culture on the world scene in the way in which we are building? Right? For the life of me, I cannot understand how Jamaicans think. I cannot, for the life of me, I cannot understand. And neither do I wish to understand because it does not make any sense. It's stupidity at its best. Get real. It's time for us to wake up and to get real and to face reality, right? Because that is the reality that we're not doing well or leaders are not interested, are not committed to changing the status quo so that our people can be respected, right? They are more desirous of keeping the majority of Jamaican citizens in on the plantation, right? On the plantation, because Jamaica, as I have said before, is a grand plantation. And you can all, you know, when you wake up in the mornings, just say, hey, how are you on the plantation? How is life on the plantation going, right? That is what you need to say before your prime ministers and your leaders, right? How is it managing the plantation? Because it is indeed a plantation. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like and you will share and you will subscribe and you will begin to understand that we have to change the Jamaican society, right? There's too many things happening that are just not going to help us to move forward as a people. Thank you so much. All the best. And we'll see you in another video.